Today I'm going to talk about lying with data or how the media manipulates charts, graphs, and maps. I want to start with the story of Terry Schiavo. Terry Schiavo went to cardiac arrest in 1990 and because of a lack of oxygen to her brain, she was left severely brain damaged and in a vegetative state. Now, her parents wanted her to be remain on a feeding tube while her husband wanted the feeding tube removed. This became a very political case. The media really latched onto it. They um, argued that Republicans felt one way while Democrats felt another way. And in the media, it just seemed like there was this huge disconnect between the two political parties. Um, it went back and forth through several courts. Eventually, the court decided to have the feeding tube removed. And CNN was one of the news organizations that covered this story. So CNN took the results of a Gallup poll. Gallup is a very reputable polling organization and published this chart. The chart says, based on what you've heard or read about the case, do you agree with the court's decision to have the feeding tube removed? Now, as you can see by the chart that CNN created, this suggests that Democrats a high majority of them agreed with the court's decision to have the feeding tube removed, while Republicans, as CNN was suggesting, because they are pro-life, a very, you know, very, uh, a much fewer number of them wanted the feeding tube removed. Now, why would they publish this like this, right? This is clearly an, an accurate chart. We can see the scaling of the chart. Um, it only goes from 53 to 63. It's zoomed in. A correct chart should start at zero. You need a baseline. And um, it looks like there's this huge difference. Now, also, the margin of error is seven, which means that either of these two numbers could be plus or minus seven percentage points, which could technically put them very close. So they wanted to do this because they were trying to suggest there was this huge disconnect between the two political parties. Right? Argument sells, right? The, a, rea a reality show of, of two sides fighting it sells, it's good ratings, but this wasn't the truth, right? So they had to republish the chart. This is what it looks like when it was republished. Clearly you can see this shows that there really isn't that much of a difference. Um, and it really wasn't a political belief. It really just had to do with people's personal feelings on whether they thought Terry, uh, a miracle could happen and her brain could be healed. Just to show you another example of how the media manipulates charts, this was an article in Business Insider. This writer was suggesting that a college education is just not worth it financially anymore with the rising costs of tuition, room, and board, as we can see by his chart here. Compared to the average salary for someone that has a college degree, it's just not worth it. You are going to waste so much money and you'll never get um, a return on your investment. However, this chart fails to include a very, very important piece of data, and that is how much you earn with just a high school degree, right? So this is actually from the same exact organization that Business Insider got their information, right? The United States Census Bureau. This is data from just the year before that shows that someone with a college degree does earn more than someone with a high school diploma. And in fact, even if you deduct the cost that someone spends on room and board and tuition for the four years they go to college, in a person's lifetime, they actually earn about $1.3 million more than someone who just has a high school degree. So very faulty use of a chart. Um, it's excluding a very important piece of data but of course he would exclude it because he was trying to prove his point. My last example is how the media manipulates using maps. So while this isn't exactly lying per se, um, it is still a manipulation of the audience. So this was a Verizon ad um, from quite a few years ago at this point, and you'll see that they're using maps to manipulate customers. If you want to know why your 3G coverage works so great on Verizon Wireless, there's a map for that. Or why you can make plans on the go at 3G speed, there's a map for that. 
And if you want to know why your friend's 3G coverage keeps her out of touch, there's a map for that, too. Yep, with five times more 3G coverage than the nation's number two wireless company, there's lots of reasons to... Okay, so as you could see, Verizon was using the two maps to show that they their customers have more coverage okay so now they do say 3g coverage but really in that commercial right with this woman sitting here acting as if she can't use her phone at all it's suggesting that 3g coverage really equals cell phone coverage and we really we know that's not true 3g does not equal just all cell phone coverage you could have at&t and go to North Dakota and have perfectly fine cell phone coverage and, and cell phone service and use the internet on your phone as well. Um, so AT&T actually, you know, tried to push the fact that yes, they have as much coverage. This is actually their map of their cell phone service. You know, you can see that it's almost identical to Verizon's. So AT&T tried to sue Verizon, claiming you know, this was clearly misleading was cleaning coverage maps and um, they, they said they suffered. They actually lost a lot of customers because of this. Doesn't matter. Verizon's still continuing to do this. Uh, AT&T actually tr ended up dropping the lawsuit because they didn't think they were going to win. And it was going to cost a lot of money. So Verizon continues with this. They keep going on with this map and now whatever the latest cell phone service is, right, whether it was 4G or now LTE, they continue suggesting that the coverage, the cell phone coverage, um, exists while in AT&T it doesn't. This is a current ad actually for Verizon. You can see that they're still doing this map manipulation. Hi there. Welcome to the gallery. How do you react when you first see this? It looks kind of like a dancer. Reality check. Some 4G LTE coverage maps don't really look like maps. Seems like maybe a bunch of berries. A witch-like shrew. This one feels more empty. I see America, but a lot of it is missing. What do you see here? Clearly a picture of the United States. Check the map. Verizon's super fast 4G LTE is the most... Okay, so again, as you can see, they're doing the same thing, right? They're suggesting that their map shows better cell phone service, right? Again, they're, they are saying legally that the map is only showing 4G LTE coverage, but they are insinuating that their cell phone service will be better and the speed will be better, I, I guess, if, um, if you go with Verizon. Now, it does not mean that if you have AT&T or T-Mobile or Sprint and you go to another part of the country, I mean, for Sprint, it looks like you can't go to the entire west side of the country and, and you'll have terrible service. Well, no, that's not true. You'll just have maybe slightly slower service um, in terms of opening an inter internet browser, but not, not so substantial that you can't use your cell phone. You'll be sitting there on a bench in a park all by yourself without being able to call anyone or use your phone in any way. So these are examples of how the media manipulates data. They are constantly doing this. Um, they are constantly using the visuals of a map or a chart or a graph to manipulate you. And so you really need to question and um, analyze whether what's, what's happening in front of you is a form of manipulation. So next time you see a map or a chart or a graph, whether it is in an advertisement or in a news article or even honestly on a news station, let's say like the six o'clock news, you really have to question whether they're being manipulated because remember, they're trying to persuade you and they're trying to get you to watch.